The things that you observe, you try to understand God. Ah, I think God is not this thing. Unbelief creep in. And the best way to conquer unbelief is to enjoy the presence of God regardless, irrespective of the condition and situation that you might be in. Continue in the presence of God because the presence and power of God will sustain you. Even in the burning furnace, the presence of God will be with you. How can these things? I am old. What's follow next? Unbelief is fake. He spoke what he got in his heart. Listen to this, family of God. Unbelief is in the human heart. Either you can cultivate them, or you have to get rid of them. Once you speak it, listen to this, real truth. Once you speak unbelief in your home, in your husband, in your wife, in the church, it contaminates, and then it holds the blessing that is designated for the whole church to enjoy. Any negative thought of unbelief, it is destroying. It is destroying. Okay, I give you an example. Ten spies against two. Oh, the place is bad. They have giants. Oh, we cannot conquer. We'll die. We'll just die like little ants. And the whole Israelite people, about a million of them, believe that the ten spies, they all die in the wilderness. Only two people, Caleb and Joshua, of all the original, just two of them went to the promised land in younger generation from 20 down because they had the faith in the Lord. Now, I want you to understand that unbelief is usually happen in the family. Now, if you have unbelief, it will hold the plan of God either way, either the wife has no faith, the husband has no faith, and then you speak a word of unbelief. That is detrimental to your faith. The blessing will not flow. Once you are doubtful, once it is re released, listen to this, the demons of unbelief will have a party together in your home. So there's no, there's unbelief word. Don't entertain that. Honey, can we change the conversation? Don't flow with that. Because God hates unbelief. It's a big Devil of hell, unbelief. Now the plan of God for the families will be healed. It will be stopped. Church, what's the unbelief word that usually come out of our mouth? It has power to kill. It has power to destroy. And it will stop the blessing. Number two, Zechariah, the blessing is, Zechariah, your prayer has been answered. I am a messenger from God, direct messenger from God. I was in the presence of God. There's the message. What he did? He object the message from God. Oh, that is big. That's a big game. He used his analytical mind. He used the natural mind. There's nothing wrong with that. But there must be a time, and most of the time, you must understand things, not only in the earthly sphere, but much more in heavenly sphere according to the word of God because the word of God can supersede all the wisdom of the world combined together. And then he explains natural things. The mind instead of submitting to the word from God, he rejected it like this. Oh, it's not normal. Or it's a myth. Or God might be wrong. You know, the mind. Number three. God right away make a quick solution so that words of unbelief will not continue. He made a make a quick solution to make him mute. Because if he will not be mute, he'll be talking negative, negative. And that is not good for the Lord. I advise you, if your husband or wife are always talking, the but, let's see, I don't think so, or negative word, you can say, can we change the topic? Because if you continue that, the blessing in the atmospheric heaven will be stopped. Negative is very strong. The more you hear the negative, you are being pushed down from the first floor of the building to the basement. And the more you continue to talk negative, you'll find yourself at the lower basement of the building. And then later on, not only you're in the lower basement of the building, your pressure, the pressure of weight is pushed you down, 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 down. Later on, you are really down spiritually. Have you noticed? Business in church as you grow. 
even in the family or in brothers and sisters, once you hear a word, one sentence, two sentence, there is what you call a pressure. Just one sentence, two sentence, you feel the way. It, you feel like discouraging. If you continue to hear, when you left that conversation, you are already down. So anything that will contaminate your faith, go where the eagles are. Don't associate. Doesn't mean you don't love them. You love them. But get along with people with faith in the Lord and you'll be like an eagle. Amen? Love them, pray for them, exhort to them. But when it comes where there is some kind of anything that is doubtful, that is human element, that is taking over, submit to God because God has a blessing. I'll, I can't go here in this wonderful story. Okay, I concluded this wonderful. Here is Zechariah. You will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happened. In other words, until John's birth will be realized. Because you did not believe my words. God prevented him to speak more negative, more distasteful, more distrustful word of unbelief comments. So I know, experientially, if I hear some word, i rather run away because, or I have to get out because I can feel the pressure of the demon. It pushes you down. I want always walking on the top. I don't want to be interfered or uh, kind of being swayed away by a word that will not please God. Okay, later on, thank God, his unbelief did not put him, God did not put him aside completely. But just a short discipline, being not able to speak for a few months. If that is applied today, as I've worried to many Christians in the world, if that is applied, just, just a thought, there are many mute and dumb Christians in many churches today. So church, 13, your prayer has been answered. Number one key point of the study, if you're sincere, wholehearted prayers, are not right away answered. Listen to the word. If your prayer is not right away answered, don't cut it off. Don't put it aside. Or consider it as lost. Church, remember this. Dear Sigur, to what you believe, continue to move without saying what you want to see the signs. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So many of you have many prayers. Don't cut it off. Continue to believe. Even it is impossible, impressionable it seems. You cannot go through. Just believe. Because God, in due time, He'll present to you that He is able. Number two, your prayers have reached the throne of God. Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father. And I tell you, and it shall be answered in the most effective way, listen to the word, that you'll be blessed and be overwhelmed by that answer in the timetable. And secondly, uh, firstly I should say, God will be glorified. The timetable, the time element of God's answer, that is the most rewarding time that you live from grade one to grade six because you persevere and believe no matter what the cost might be, I will be able to see the promised land, will continue with my wife and my children to follow the Lord, and whatever the cost, I will see Jesus in the kingdom of new heaven and new earth. Don't ever give an inch to give up. Okay. Closing words, Elizabeth conceived and delivered a baby boy. Your money speaking is impossible. God said nothing is impossible with God. Another story, Abraham at the age of 75, 90, promised to have a son. 99 years of age, Sarah 90 years old, Genesis. To have a baby is a natural, impossible. God promised he would conceive Sarah and Isaac was born for a couple that is impossible to conceive because their natural tendency to create or procreate a baby is not in the right age anymore. God gave them Isaac, the son of the promise. Thirdly, 
Christ the Messiah came, an angel Gabriel came to Mary. Mary, you are blessed among women, for out of you shall come forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, which being interpreted Savior. And Mary said, a woman of faith, I salute Mary. How, how could this be? This is not unbelief, but a question, a genuine question. How could this be? I am virgin. I have never slept with any man. And then the angel explained, and, and over the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and you'll conceive. And then what she said, your handmaiden, so be it. You know, church, those three wonderful, wonderful messages to us to understand. From Abraham, nothing is impossible with God. To John the Baptist, Elizabeth, mother conceived, nothing is impossible with God. To Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was a virgin, conceived Jesus Christ and become the son of the living God who died on our sin. God has given us a superlative example of extraordinary manifestations of His power. The question is, what is your need today? Is that too great that God cannot answer? The answer is nothing. Church, believe that all your family members will be saved. Believe that your dream in line with the Word of God will be answered. Believe that our church will continue to become a blessing to many, to hundreds, to 200, to 300, to people, to 400. Believe. Believe that our love for another will continue to increase. Believe that your limited talents and ability, God will increase. Everything is possible. All you have to do is to say, God, no matter what, I believe and I submit. And when we move in the rhythm of God's faith, you will see that God is God in that man that he should lie. You will see in the mountain top. The wonderful promised land and we'll enjoy together serving God today and throughout eternity in Jesus name Amen Father we thank you so much God increase our faith no man is super faith super hero we're humbling ourselves to you may this word before Jesus Christ is born will be written in the tables of our hearts we will not interpret things the way we understand because the ways of God is so, so high. We have to submit to the word of God in the only way for us to understand.